really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. It's, it's amazing that you do that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, you, absolutely, because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of Netlandia. We are back with O'Reilly Radio Show 130, recorded Friday, October 28th, 2016, where we're going to dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversation that ought to make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I've got my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith, and just over there, I've got David O'Connor. Welcome, gentlemen. Great to be here. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, yeah. (laughs) For those of you that are not watching live, well, why aren't you watching live? You certainly should be. We're streaming out to Facebook and also to our Twitch channel. You can reach the uh, the Twitch stream directly from our website, and you can chat with us directly from there at oreillyradio.com, just like Mama Van has. Hey, welcome, Mama Van. Thank you very much for joining us as well. Okay, so tonight this is our uh, this is show A. This is our potpourri segment, and uh, well, some things have been uh, have really kind of crossed our. Uh, our bows, as you, as you were. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. First, audience feedback from previous shows, we don't have any. That's probably why I skipped it. But, you know, if we do make mistakes, like that one right there. So, if you find one, not that one, because I already found it, but if you find another one, please pause the podcast, do whatever you need to do. Send us a note, oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com. Or phone it in, we've got a phone number, 470-222-6759. That'll get to us, and we'll also take your text messages at that uh, that number as well. Okay. Um, last week we did have a, have some new blood. We had Amber Besecker, and uh, she is um, planning on joining us again. I believe alternate Fridays, so you'll get to see her next time, just not uh, not this time. So, oh, and we also have McGriffin. Who is McGriffin? That's me. Oh, that's you. Never mind then. That's me. <laughs> Never mind. Gamer then. tag. Oh, okay. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Gamer tags. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, before we continue to get started, you might have noticed that I sound a little bit more um, baritone, um, more, more bassy. That's baritone as in B-E-A-R, baritone. Yeah. Whatever. I'm tired. I'm tired <laughs> and I'm sick and I've got, uh, I've got some, some great cough syrup in me. Uh, you know the stuff with codeine, <laughs> so I may That's be some good stuff. I may be a little bit loopy as uh, as the show progresses on um, for your edutainment, certainly. So <laughs> we'll do what. As we long can. as you don't start doing shots of it on air, I don't think we will be a problem. Uh no, no, I, I'm I'm going to do those off air, definitely, definitely off air. <laughs> Unless you're watching live, in which case you might catch me doing it anyway. So no, no harm, no foul, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> All right, into the show itself. Um, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle going on with Russia. They've they've been in the news lately. There's uh, there's two items that, well, three, but I couldn't find the find the link right away. Um, Russia was voted off the UN Human Rights Council. And that was amid weird uh, amid mounting allegations of uh, Syrian war crimes. What I know, shocking, right? Um, and uh, additionally, they um, uh, we'll get to this uh, later also in the bad news, but I just wanted to, to point it out here since we're talking about Russia. They're also um, rebuilding their nuclear arsenal. Uh, so their, their current, uh, current birds are um, the RS-28 Samrat missile, which can travel at 4.3 miles per second and deliver a 40 megaton uh, blast. NATO called the missile the Satan-2. <laughs> uh, the weapon contains the power to destroy an area about the size of France. Yeah. Um, so, good times there. Um, the Russian defense ministry wants to put the Samrat, or Satan too, into service by late 2018 and remove the last of the old SS-18 missiles by 2020. Uh, so you can find those in uh, show notes for 130E, bad ideas. Um, I think you know why. Um, also, they've been uh, they've been mobilizing their fleet uh, in addition to what they're doing with Syria to, you know, 
bring a little bit of a little bit of Russia to Syria, you know, in the form of their uh, one of their ancient Cold War uh, aircraft carriers. I I hesitate to call it an aircraft carrier anymore because it actually has to launch with an ocean-going tugboat in case it breaks down. Yeah. So it's, well, it carries aircraft. It just doesn't necessarily move much itself. Yeah, it's just it may not get there. Uh, and apparently, they were denied uh, refueling per, um, permits in, I think, Greece when they were going hmm. through through the middle uh, through the Mediterranean. So, yeah, they're um, Russia's uh, R- Russia needs a needs a Trump to make Russia great again. I think. Yeah. Maybe we can just export him. No, they gotta have, they gotta have somebody who can fly off the handle and actually start a war, without thinking it through. Oh, and and that's, that's the only way to really mobilize the people. And that's not Putin. <laughs> well, Putin can't do it on his own, and still appear to be the good guy. Mm, okay. Okay. But America so- can be the bad guy. In many in many cases, America is the bad guy. So that doesn't that's not a bit of surprise. Um, the UN General Assembly, uh, which is uh, has 193 members, elected 14 members to the 47 Nation Council, the UN the UN's main body charged with promoting and protecting human rights. So that would be the Human Rights Council itself. Uh, there there's some other interesting nations in that list. Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, China, Brazil, Rwanda, Hungary, Croatia, Cuba, Cuba, <laughs> uh, South Africa, Japan, Tunisia, the U.S., and the U.K. Um, now, many of those nations, say Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, and China, and Rwanda, and what? Well, okay, there's a lot of those nations that perhaps shouldn't be on the Human Rights um, Oversight Committee. Yeah. In fact, in in many cases, maybe the United States shouldn't be on that list either. Probably not. I'm going to go with no. Yeah, we probably shouldn't. We've bombed far too many children, I think. So, um, Guatemala was the only country running for a seat uh, besides Russia to not be elected which I find also interesting. But, yeah. So, so then that um, means that the, the countries that are on it are pretty much the only ones who wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that, yeah. Yeah. When you put it that way. Mm-hmm. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking that, uh, that Putin might get his, uh, get his panties in a twist about this whole thing and, you know, use this as as yet another stump into war. But I'm it's on certainly been angry, so I don't know. Go ahead, David. I was. I just said he certainly seems to be angling for that. Um, yeah. Yeah, Mama Van. Not going to be good. Mama Van is pointing out that. Um, that add the goings on on the Dakota pipeline to the list of reasons the USA should not be on the list. And well, yeah, we just, North Dakota's not making us look very good. Not no, we're not good. making ourselves look very good. <clears throat> well, it's North also, Dakota is just happens to be where it's happening, but yeah, well, there's been a series of, state of police shootings of unarmed civilians and horses uh, and horses. Yeah. And there was a, uh, there was a Buffalo, um, was it Buffalo? Yeah, it was Buffalo Stampede, yeah. actually, out near Standing Rock. And, again, buffaloes are sacred when when it comes to Native American, you know, mythology, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. there was a, they, they've been praying to the buffalo to come and help show them and give them strength in these, this time of their need. And, by God, they just suddenly showed up cresting a hill. Well, actually, they were they were being herded in for an annual inspection of their of their ranks, where they were going to be immunized and tagged and and released back. Still hilarious. It is hilarious, but you know, 
sadly, not quite like that. And yes, we're definitely going to hit the Bundys. Um, and how those uh, those idiots with the oh, that's yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> But not yet. That's that's yeah. We're, we're, we'll just save all of that ammunition for one dump. That's a whole segment. There's nothing else empty in that the segment. bag on that. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's going to be in Law and Order. So look for episode C for that one. Okay. So and uh, and Stephen, you found one for uh, for our little potpourri roundup here. What what's you, what do you got here? It's uh... this is very. Uh, I've oh, been following things that are occurring. Yeah, in the Southeast Asia, it's an Asian area where. Again, people need to be aware of this and what's going on and the craziness that's happening out there. But this has been happening for now quite a while. Uh, recently, within the last year or so, this man named uh, Rodrigo Duarte got elected to be president of the Philippines. He is a, a massive, massive right-wing hardliner. Very nationalistic. And essentially imagine Trump but with a higher speaking level and probably the brains to actually pull off what he's trying to do. Okay. Because one of the things he came into power on was the idea of, you know, bringing down crime in the country and bringing down drug usage in the country. By doing this, he has decided, one of the policies he's decided to produce, pursue, is that of fighting a drug war. I don't mean this by, like, the U.S.'s thing of we're going to help people get off drugs, we're going to help them, you know, needle exchanges, therapy programs, rehabilitation. No, Duarte literally has given sanction to death squads to wander the streets. And over, you know, the report there says around 1,100, I've seen reports saying upwards of over 3,000 people have just been executed by these people for possession and or selling of drugs. Just straight out killing. No, no trial. No arrest, just, nope, sorry, bang, done. Yeah. Now, there's been an advantage of this, is drug use has gone way down in the country. Yeah, I imagine. But <clears throat> but I think all of us can go, you know what, just state-sanctioned murder of your own citizens, probably not the best policy. Um, that was one of the first things he started with that. One of those recent things that came up in the last few over. days... Wow. Yeah, that was his, that was his opener. Was that policy, which that is, by the way, that policy has not stopped. That policy is still ongoing. People are still just being executed. Nice. Most oh, well, recently, he was at a a meeting in Japan, I believe, where he laid out some more plans that he wants to do for the Philippines, which includes having absolutely no foreign troops there and telling the U.S. I want all of your troops and bases and all your ships gone within two years. And he's willing to yank base rights in order to have this accomplished. Hmm. So telling all of us, all foreign troops to GTFO, um, he's also said that he's willing and possibly pursuing breaking economic ties with the United States, is actively and openly courting both Russia and China for economic trade and all of that. And it's just... I'm watching this happen, and my jaw is hitting the floor. And I'm, one, yeah, I, I am partly amazed at the fact that this guy is seemingly being able to pull this off. But two, <clears throat> what really gets of me human is, rights violations. Oh god, yeah. <clears throat> um, what gets me also is this: you hear a lot of people, you know, speaking about Syria, speaking about things in the Middle East. You always hear. Ever since basically the Iraq and Afghanistan wars have occurred, you've heard murmurings about the idea of, oh, look out, the specter of World War III. Mm. Where I don't really want to bring up the, you know, be the, be the doomsayer here. But, <laughs> That's my job. But I've looked at, it is you know, from an intelligence perspective. Honest. Yeah. From the intelligence perspective, from the perspective of looking at, you know, what I've read in some military journals and military documents um intelligence documents and everything else if at this point it's not if world war three is going to start in the next 10 years it is not going to start in the middle east it is going to start here in that area of the world because everybody i think can remember the whole china which hasn't stopped yet is still 
claiming and building islands in the middle of the South China Sea and lower. Yeah. Some of those are territory and territorial waters claimed by the Philippines. We remember a picture of those brave Filipino sailors on a beached boat, you know, bravely holding out because that way they can cruise their territory. Yeah. Um, here's how I see a possibility of this going down is you've got people, you've got Duterte openly siding with Russia, openly siding with China, especially with the Chinese angle here. And okay, cool. They get into an agreement. Yay. China can have those islands or, you know, and pay either rent them or pay for them, whatever. But then that might also push China into going, okay, let's keep, you know, keep doing this, keep going on, taking over others, building more islands. I could see an issue of, especially with Japan, because there's several islands that are claimed by Japan that Japan that China has tried to say is ours. I could see somebody, cooler heads not prevailing, and starting with a small incident, as they usually do, an active shooting war occur in that area, small scale. But the problem is, a lot of bigger countries, us and Japan being an example, mm -hmm. have military defense agreements. <clears throat> Which means, if a Chinese Navy boat decides to take a shot at something from Japan, and Japan shoots back, and they get into a small-scale regional war, we're getting called in on the side of Japan. We will have to honor that treaty agreement. China's got some of their own. So that might happen. Or say, you know, Japan and Philippines get a small thing. Well, if they have this, Philippines Ch Philippines will call on China and say, hey, help us out here, etc. You see how this, it's like World War One. It's also partially like World War Two, where just all these trees and everything else just feed off one another until we have this massive conflict all centered out there. Started by a bunch of small things because of one guy or one small country. It's a terrifying thing. I hope it doesn't happen, but the problem is I'm seeing with what Duarte is doing and seeing how other tensions are going in the world, I'm seeing it become a possibility. Whereas before I would be like, it's just a fever dream. And that scares me. The Philippines is kind of like a fever dream <clears throat> in many cases. Didn't used to be. No, no, it didn't used to be. But this guy, he's, he's a real piece of work. And... Yeah. You know, and so I brought up his picture for those of you in, in the live stream watching the video. Um, is right there underneath uh, Stephen. <clears throat> um, yeah. I'll I'd... take a moment of silence to remember that this guy was elected. Yeah, I, I know there are numerous talking heads and people here who honestly were like, how in the hell did he get elected? He was literally calling for practically for war crimes against his own people, and that was one of his campaign promises. And yet he got elected. And he's what? doing it because he said exactly what he was going to do. There they are. Yeah. This is one of those be careful what you wish for kind of things. Oh, I like the... Uh... There are two tragedies in life. One is not getting what you want, and the other is getting it. So true. So very true. Yeah, again, pulling up the... To give you an idea of some of the personality of this guy, um, looking at the, the Wikipedia page for, for Rodrigo Duarte, uh, Duarte stated at a rally in April 2016 that he shot a fellow student who had teased him about his racial origin while at San Beda Law School. Law College. The truth is, in quote, but the truth is, I'm used to shooting people. When we were about to graduate from San Beda, I shot a person. Duarte said that he shot the student in a corridor, which led to his expulsion from the college. That was it? <laughs> Expelled? The story was received with laughter and applause by the thousands of supporters at the rally. After the rally, Duarte told a reporter that the student survived the incident, but refused to answer any further questions. Didn't Trump say that he could shoot somebody in the face on Wall Street and get away with it? Yeah. To rousing applause? Yeah. Here we are. I just suddenly had a flash of who this guy, who Duarte actually reminds me of. It's not even necessarily so much. Because Trump, so far from what I've seen, is a lot of bluster, but not actually action. Yeah. Duarte reminds me of Andrew Jackson. 
who, for those people who don't know, yeah. Andrew Jackson, president of the United States, um, we know he liked to fight duels. We can confirm that he killed 12 people minimum in duels, and the number might be as high as 300. Yeah, I think but that's know. also yeah. only the official numbers. There's also or things of him doing other things like, you know, nearly beating a man to death with essentially a shillelagh um, because he he uh, dishonored a woman dishonored a woman's reputation even though this woman was literally a whore. Um, and he was upset that she was being called a whore. Um, yeah. Um, that level of just, huh. no, I'm going to do what I want I don't care is what I see of this man. And it, it, again, Trump with actual capability. And that's what scares me. That is frightening. And again, with followers that would be, you know, perfectly happy with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I wonder. Since so it's the idea of, go ahead. Well, I, I just wonder if, he, if he'll be reelected. Probably. I mean, again, crime's gone way down in this country. He's been a success to the people who matter as far as he's concerned. But he's terrifying the other people. <laughs> yeah. It's but, reason for them not to vote. But voter suppression in countries like that is a lot easier to pull off. Yep. And voter intimidation is a lot easier to pull off. They've already got the death squads. That's true. They can simply be retasked. They already have the death squads. Well, yeah. For people that are out there that are thinking, again, the the main mainstream media, as a, as a, the name is used, always focuses on things, the sexy stuff, what's going on in Syria, all the bombing, all the stuff there. Not that that's sexy. Pay attention to, to get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> pay attention to other parts of the world because what's going on there might actually matter more in the long run, or at least as much, absolutely <clears throat> yeah. as much. Okay. Yeah, going to take a while to process all that. Yeah, that's going to wrap show A. So we'll be back with show B here in just a minute. We're so screwed. We are. So <laughs> the world is so screwed. <laughs> Shh, they'll hear you. <laughs>